first gear is useless, but we'll do it anyway. Alright, I'm putting this part at the beginning just in case anybody wants the highlights and doesn't want to have to stick through all the details. Took and parted out a complete LSJ supercharged cobalt. Uh, took the whole six rib drive assembly accessories and everything and put them on the HHR in place of the five rib. Now you hear me say four rib a lot through the video, just ignore that. It's five rib. Um, and installed it with very minimal uh, issues as far as the LSJ stuff going on the 2.4 liter. And now anybody that's doing this that has a complete engine or a complete car, I would suggest not buying the ZZP kit. It's kind of a waste of money because you have everything you need there. Just buy a pigtail for the 2.5 uh, bar map sensor that comes with the LSJ. Uh, and of course you'll need uh, depending on what power levels you want, you can run the stock injectors, but uh, 60 or 80 pound injectors, uh, pulley size that you want to go with, and a stage 2 belt. That's what I would buy from ZZP, because that's, that's all I ended up using was the oversized pulley, stage 2 belt, the 2.8 inch pulley and uh, for the supercharger, uh, and the 60 pound injectors. So outside of that, I didn't use any of the rest of the kit, um, and that's what I would do if, if I was to do it all over again. Uh, also, the large front mount intercooler or heat exchanger does not fit behind the HHR bumper. It doesn't, in the instructions or in the website, it doesn't say that it does fit, but also doesn't say you'd have to massively trim your bumper like you'll see later in the video. I also uh, use the LS4 throttle body, um, which ZZP has for sale for like 200 bucks, I think, maybe a little bit more. Uh, but if you do some research and cross-reference the GM part numbers, it's the same part number as the throttle body that comes on the 4.2 liter Chevy Trailblazers. Um, and you can pick those up at any salvage yard for like 20, 30 bucks. So that's what I did. Uh, bought, bought, I think, $30 uh, Trailblazer uh, throttle body. And of course you have to enlarge in the uh, supercharger inlet snout to have that work where the throttle body opens completely and, and also you know, actually gain the benefits from going with a larger throttle body. You'll also have to buy the uh, adapter uh, harness from ZZP that goes from the LE5 uh, throttle body to the either LSJ or the LS4. It's a cheap little part but that's just one more thing you'll need so you don't actually have to cut into your uh, your harness and repin it. Alright, finally get around to supercharging my 06 HHR 2.4 liter 5 speed. Um, I bought a complete LSJ SS Cobalt to part out so I'm not using 100% of the ZCP's kit. I'm actually going to be using most of the LSJ belt drive assembly because it's actually a 6 rib unlike uh, the LE5's or you know, the 2.4 2.2 liters have a 4 rib system. Going with a very small pulley on the supercharger, so I don't want to risk having belt slippage running up four. So I'm going to show you where, what we are right now. I tore it all down, and we're actually right there at the reassembly process. So I'll show you what's going on. All right, I've got the intake manifold out of the way, all the front drive accessories done, uh, done and removed. You don't have to pull the valve cover. I just did it because, I mean, I figure while I'm painting everything else, throw a little paint on it too. All right, so here's the crank pulley off of the 2.4 liter. And you can see it's uh, only a four rib belt drive system versus the LSJ is six rib. And also, like I said, using the six rib alternator, the tensor assembly, tension assembly, tensioner assembly, if I can speak right, um, and put the half inch oversized pulley, which requires just a little bit of clearancing, a little bit of grinding there to make that work. That, along with a stage two belt, will take up the um, slack from going with the much smaller 2.8 liter, a uh, 2.8 inch pulley. Instead of changing the whole AC compressor, because my AC blows cold and I really don't want to break the system, I actually just uh, pulled the clutch off and the uh, pulled the snap ring and pulled the four rib pulley off of the compressor that's on it and put the six rib on the HHR uh, AC compressor and the clutch. So, got that installed. The But I ran into my first hurdle. 
So the heads are different, obviously, between the uh, 2.4 liter and the 2.0. Looks like to run the tensioner bracket, I'm actually going to have to trim off these bolt bosses right here on the head. Because everything lines up, all the bolt holes are there, but it hits right there. So those are just bosses for holding on. Well, that fell all the way down. For holding on the uh, engine lift point. So now that the lift point is actually on this bracket, I don't need those anymore. So got the head covered up with an old t-shirt, keep any shavings out of there. And we're going to cut those up. All right. Got the uh, head trimmed right there. So now I've got uh, plenty of clearance. Just took off those uh, little bosses. Bolt bosses got all of the accessories on. Where it ran into one other little hiccup, and I'll show you real quick. The uh, plug-in is different on the cobalt alternator to the HHR. So basically, you just take the back of the alternator apart and uh, pull that off right there. Swapped it out and uh, went right back together. Perfect. Plugged in. And we are ready for the supercharger. First startup after supercharger. We'll see how this goes. Got it started. Um, you don't have to actually do this. I just don't like how the wiring harness just kind of lays over the top of the supercharger like this. So I am uh, delumining it and pulling it back, and I'm actually going to route the throttle body plug back around the back side of the engine so you can't see it because uh, I think the wires all just laying up here looks uh, look pretty crappy and tacky. So it's optional. You don't have to do it, but it bugged me if I didn't. Also, one thing ZZP does not mention in their instructions is which ABS uh, fuse to tap into for the intercooler pump. And it is, it's this one right here. Um, and also, you'll have to run a relay off of it. Um, just use that as your source voltage because if you don't, it'll actually backfeed the ECM. And when you shut it down, it'll continue to try to run for a few more seconds. So, got main power coming off here, routed down down into here I went ahead and put the relay because it is a waterproof relay just down there with the intercooler pump itself and uh, yeah pretty pretty easy when doing this swap on a HHR with a ZZP kit be prepared to um, get some do do some custom stuff because their kit does not really work bolt-on wise for the HHR for one the Jose included for the EVAP doesn't even, it doesn't even remotely come close, it, it's huge. Uh, so I just sourced that from junk I'd laying around. The intake that they gave doesn't even come close to working for the HHR. It's a 45 degree angle with, and the actual mass airflow adapter it also has a little bit of an angle to it. The ZZP kit had, it's like a 45 with just the mass airflow adapter that also has a bit of an angle to it. But they just, the instructions were kind of confusing. This They basically wanted you to lay it up here like this. And other people I've seen that had done that, they couldn't close the hood without smashing the brand new cane and air filter. So I bought a 90 and actually used the mass airflow adapter from the cold air intake I previously had. And actually I was able to route it right where the original, where I had the cold air intake routed uh, when it was NA. Also, I had to buy that anyway because I actually went with the LS4 throttle body, which needs a three and a quarter, I think, or three and a half inch inlet. So I had to buy three inch on one end and I think three and a quarter on the other. Got the wiring harness uh, re-loomed and um, tucked in nice so you don't have the wires hanging up here. The, um, well, let's start back here. Got the uh, VVT solenoid wiring there tied into the coil packs. And back down here is where the throttle body and the uh, injector and map uh, since they're all comfy. So I ran those down underneath, back up around right here, 
That one goes underneath the supercharger to the throttle body, and this one runs underneath the supercharger and connects to the injector rail and map sensor. So it's all nice, tucked down and clean, and no wires draped over the top of the engine of the supercharger. One thing I did differently from how ZZP's instruction were, I didn't use the two bar map. Well, I originally did it. Um, I didn't really like how um, limited it was. You know, two bar map sensor will only read up to 14 and a half PSI. And I would like to push more than that eventually. And I already had the LSJ um, set up. So what I did is I bought a pigtail online and actually utilized the two and a half bar LSJ map sensor that has the AIT2 temperature uh, sensor in it so I can actually see post intercooler intake temps and not pre intercooler because the factory original one is wired into the mass airflow so I didn't use the mass airflow ex harness extension originally so what I did is I just took it and cut the two temperature sense wires out of it and then just wired it in right here so you have three wires for your map original map wire right in and then the fourth is the AIT2 so I can actually get the most uh, correct data and hopefully with the 2.6 pulley I'll be a little bit closer to my goals as far as boost um, but that way this two and a half gives me uh, plenty of, uh, of wiggle room because I can go up to about 21 21 and a half psi before it's maxed out all right, I had to change things up from what ZZP had in the instructions because obviously I, this is for a Cobalt, even though their site list is for an HHR also. Anyway, uh, as you saw in the previous clip, I had a straight piece here and then the plastic 90 and the pump sat about right here. Well, the problem with that was it would hit the fog light. Not even the fog light, it would actually hit the actual cutout for it. With the fog lights removed, it would still hit the pump. So they do include this 90, so I put this 90 in there uh, and move the pump. I actually cut this plastic out to move the pump a little bit more in line And honestly, I think it works out a lot better. Uh, I was able to trim a bunch of the hose off You can kind of see it's a little bit more of a straight shot right there right up to the uh, end plate I had to cut a whole lot more out of my bumper than I originally thought I would um, I might in the future go because this bumper was junk so I really didn't mind cutting it out too bad um, might go with the uh, stealth heat exchangers that ZP's got and I bought this little reservoir for 40 bucks off of eBay, so the coolant actually flows uh, through it. Um, and also, you know, I think it's a quart uh, and being aluminum, that's an extra heat sink. And uh, it, uh, so the whole coolant system holds about a gallon. This is my uh, little gauge pod I use to monitor my vitals. It's um, it's an Autool X60. It's a real cheap $30, $40 tool that plugs into your o OBD2 port. Uh, this, the big numbers there in the middle is my map sensor. Um, and of course, uh, it reads actual barometric pressure, not boost just by itself. So anything under 14.6 here where I'm at is va under vacuum. Anything over that is boost. So. 15.6 is one pound of boost, 16.6 uh, is two, so on and so forth. Bottom left is throttle position, and uh, bottom right is the air intake two temperature sensor that is post uh, intercooler, so that's actual air intake temperature. And also has a bar across the bottom that shows RP. RPMs I can do 10 pounds of boost so so I'm not making the boost I expected um, I expected to be probably around 14 to 15 um, most days I don't see past 10 if it's really cool I might see 11 um, but after actually after it warms up I'll probably see about uh, eight and a half nine pounds of boost now 
That might be because obviously the supercharger was made for a two liter and I've got a 2.4 liter. Um, I've also maximized all the other uh, aspects of airflow, long tube header, no cat, real free flowing exhaust. So there's a lot less restriction and it's a 20% larger motor. Even with a 2.8 pulley, I, like I said, I figured it would be more, but about nine to 10 PSI. I've seen people with, where I, I talked to people with a two liter, the LSJ, that are making 16, 17, 18 on 2.8 pulley, but don't really know all their other supporting mods uh, also. It still pulls really hard and it's really fun to drive because I mean you can be you can hit 10 pounds of boost at 45% 50% throttle at 2500 RPMs so uh, the power is instant it's great it's the benefit of the, having a supercharger over turbo there's no there's no lag. Um, so after I rule out a few more things make sure that like, my supercharger bypass valve isn't leaking um, I'll go to the dyno and the drag strip, and I might actually have already ordered a 2.6 pulley because um, I needed a few other things uh, along with the factory clutch is not like the extra power. And of course, with 215,000 miles on the original clutch, I expected that. It uh, doesn't hold boost in fifth gear, and you can't power shift or it will slip. If you let the clutch fully engage before you punch it, it grabs every time and it's great, but it is still the factory clutch with 215,000 miles. So. Got a clutch coming for it, and so up next is the, I'm going to upgrade the 2.6 pulley, uh, upgrade the clutch, and then kind of see where we're at boost-wise, make sure I don't have an issue there, and then we're heading to the dyno and back to the drag strip. First gear is useless, but we'll do it. 